rankings don't mean a bunch, but I guess you'd rather have a guy that's number one than, <laughs> sure. you know. Uh, I think more importantly, we got a great player and a great person. Um, he's obviously big. He can run. He's, uh, he's got real speed. Um, he's got great energy. He can catch. He, he, he makes plays all over the field. Uh, he'll get after you blocking. And, uh, yeah, really excited to add him to the group. You know, six, seven, I know we always talk about John's height and stuff, but what, what, what can he do at his size that's going to help you guys? Um, well, we tried to make sure we could have the two tallest tight ends we could possibly <laughs> get. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, th I think he just gives you, you know, another big target. Uh, and, like you said, really good hands, can run, can do some stuff after the catch. Uh, so I think I think his, his – Future is really bright and unlimited potential. I know he was, you know, obviously committed to Louisville and had the coaching change or whatever there. But what surprised at all that, that you know this late in the process, a guy of that quality was on the market? You know, I mean, just to, to have a chance at a guy like him. No, uh, we've been. We knew he was interested a long time ago. Yeah, he visited early in the season. Um, was interested, obviously, even before that. So uh, I think, you know. We maybe were a little bit easier geographically for him. Yeah. Um, but I think more than that, it came down to knowing Boise State's tradition, uh, wanting to be a real part of a winner, and wanting to be a part of a, a place that uses tight ends and get him on the field instead of standing on the sideline waiting for a chance and, um, you know, could really get out here and, and impact the game. I, you know, we haven't really had a chance to talk to you in a while, but you know the, the special teams obviously this year has kind of been up and down. What, what, for for you, just as the guy, you know, you know Coach Harson was saying everybody is involved and stuff, but you know you have the special teams coordinator title or whatever. What's it been like for you this year, just with the, the highs and the lows of the special teams? Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's been hard. Um, obviously, disappointing, and I feel. You know, uh, th those units cost us the championships. Um, and nobody feels more pressure or, or, or worse about that than I did. And um, working really hard to, to fix it and make sure that never, ever happens again. Uh, and certainly... You know, the last game leaves a, a terrible taste in your mouth. And, you know, just having that day one mindset of whatever we got to do to start this from the start and get it right and have it right moving forward and be the reason we win, not lose. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's days maybe it doesn't have a tremendous impact on the game. Uh, we can never, ever have a day where it costs us a game. And that's happened this year. And it's uh, obviously the last game. You know, we got to run out there and make an extra point. If we do that, game over. And um, it's very frustrating. And just working hard to make sure that that does not happen again. And obviously, if you knew, you would have done you know done things differently earlier. But. You know, coming into the season, there was so much optimism because last year the special teams units were so good, and there was so much improvement from the previous year. What you know, and it doesn't seem like it was kind of one area too. There was a lot of different areas. What, what, like I said, I know if you knew it, you would have fixed it. But what, why do you think just the with so much optimism and so many returning guys coming back on a lot of those units that it it, it did see such a drop off? Uh, I think I didn't have enough sense of urgency um, and probably took, took for granted that some of these guys got this and they know what, know what to do. And we, we probably started at step, you know, or, or went too fast to step C and D and, and not enough on step A. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's one thing about special. You can't move past step A until that's perfect. And um, we, we got away from that and made some mistakes and you know uh, probably started reaching and trying to change some things that, that we shouldn't have changed um, and got to be better with uh, just being sound and, and doing things technically correct every single time and if we do that we'll be fine but if we get away from that 
one little one little chink in the armor, one little crack, mm -hmm. and it costs you. It costs you dearly. And, um, and it's a high price to pay. But that's the reality of it. And um, it's on me to get it right. And um, we're working hard to make sure we do that. You can obviously tell by your your the way you're answering it that it's obviously impacted you a lot and obviously you know been tough for you to deal with, but. You know, I, don't, I don't know how often you're on social media and stuff, but fans and everybody are just, you know, obviously fans, you know, if the running backs don't run, they get mad at the running backs coach. If, if O-line doesn't block, I mean, just, I, I don't know if you're aware or whatever, but just, just how, how hard is that as a coach to, you, you, you sound hard enough on yourself as it is, and then maybe to have outside people unhappy with things, and just because of the expectations here, I don't know if you, yeah, know, if you hey, hear criticism or if it bothers you. No, I, I, I would, I, I, I really don't pay a lot of attention to that because there's, there's nobody I feel more important than answering to than, than our team mm -hmm. and our family in here. And I don't mean that as a slight, but you know, these guys, they lay it all on the line, coaches, players, everybody. And, and uh, there's nobody I want to stand up and, and do my part for more than these guys. Now, with that said, do I want the fans to be happy? Heck yeah, I do. But if we're doing it in here, they'll, they'll, they'll be happy. Um, um, but yeah, it, it does impact me. And, um, and I'm talking about what the performance more than anything else. Uh -huh. And even there might be times it goes unnoticed that something was wrong because it just didn't get exposed. Um, and that bothers me. Uh, so it's, it's more than I want everything to be perfect every single time. And when it's not, that... I think reflects on, on me. I, I take it as a reflection on me, and uh, my goal is to get it right. And I wish I could change things, but you know the reality is I have to live with it that it wasn't, and it cost us a chance in the championship. Yeah, and I guess quickly in Boston College, you know their special teams and stuff. I mean, how, how do you kind of is this a chance for you guys to obviously you know still finish strong despite despite some of the struggles you think? Or? Yeah, they're, they're really good on special teams. This can be a big challenge for us. So it's a tremendous opportunity for us to go out there and get some things right. Uh, you know, go out there and make an extra point. Go out there and protect the punter, cover punts, uh, get a big return. Yeah, everything, every one of those things matters. And we need to go out there and do it right uh, to finish this season the right way and springboard into the offseason and in the next season to make it right.